gunfire. Suspicious device left on the premises. Battering ram is used by the police to gain access to the building. Well, ladies and gentlemen, it's another day in America. I'll be right back. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. My Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com. It's the only company I trust to protect my wealth. Call 800-B-U-I-C-O. Uh, we're still looking at that horrible situation in San Bernardino, but what's perplexing is that the suspects of this mass shooting, 12 dead, we don't know where they are. They escaped in an SUV. With that police presence, no one knows where they are. Now, I want you to listen to some of the tweets of the worst people in the history of America. Hillary Clinton tweets this right after this, before knowing anything about it. Instead of congratulating the cops for saving all the others, listen to what this hag says. Hillary Clinton, I refuse to accept this as normal. We must take action to stop gun violence now. Martin O'Malley, one of the dumbest people in the history of America, also said we must enact meaningful gun safety laws. The Queen of Hearts from San Francisco, one of the most, well, I can't say it on a national show. Senator, Senator Dianne Feinstein, again attacking guns. Donald Trump, the only one with dignity, says California shooting looks very bad. Good luck to law enforcement, and God bless. This is when our police are so appreciated. See why Donald is popular. Do you understand? He's the only politician who gets it right. He's the only politician who got this right. He is, by the way, they call him a demagogue. He's the least of the of the demagogues. Wait until you see what Obama says as they they whip his speech up. As soon as the sorority is finished with the souffle, the speech souffle, we'll be hearing about gun violence any minute right now. But we already heard about it. Are you ready for this one? Here is your maximum leader from Paris just yesterday on guns in America in clip number two. I say this every time we've got a one of these mass shootings this just doesn't happen in other countries in the united states we have the power to do more to prevent what is just a regular process of gun homicides that is unequaled by multiples of five six ten and and i, I think the american people understand that so my hope is is that once again, uh, this spurs a conversation and action, uh, and I will continue to present uh, those things I can do administratively. Which means he's going to use executive action to take your guns away. Did you hear what the sneak just said? I will continue to present those things that I can do administratively. In other words, the dictator is already primed for this. You know, if I were given to conspiracies, and i got to be very careful right now, because living under this questionable anti-American president of ours. It leads you to have conspiracy theories, whether you ever had them before or not. You have to ask yourself if the Iraqi people themselves are now saying that ISIS and America are one and the same. See, they finally woke up to what's going on. And I'll give you the evidence as to why the Iraqis are saying this. Now you see this man is on a vendetta to either limit your access to weapons or take away your access altogether. We don't know what this maniac really wants to do. Now we have this shooting right now. He hasn't spoken yet today. But what's very strange to me is that the, th the three shooters appear in black, uh, uniforms or something like that, masks anyway, and body armor, and escape in a black SUV after starting the shooting in this uh, social services center. You want to do a conspiracy theory? If they are never found... What would you conclude? Warning. The Savage Nation contains adult language, adult content, psychological nudity. Listener discretion is advised. And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation, home of unprotected talk, borders, language, culture. And here he is, Michael Savage. Well, I have no new information on this shooting in Southern California. It's, it's quite perplexing. 
that three men in body armor walk in with automatic weapons and open up in a social services center, killing at least 12, injuring 20, and they get away. They get away with a SWAT team there. Now, what this means, I don't know. You can have any crazy speculation that you want. We don't know the identity of the shooter, so put in the person, the type of person you hate the most. Pick the religion or the ethnic group you hate the most and put them in there, and then come up with a, uh, a, a, a conspiracy theory, if you'd like, because there's no reason to this. No one knows who did it. Will we ever know who did it? This could be one of those mysteries like the plane that went down the Malaysian jet. Did they ever find the wreckage? Did they ever find the wreckage of that Malaysian jet? I have an eerie feeling we're not going to know who did this one. But why now? Why now so soon after the shooting at that uh, abortion clinic? People killed in the shooting. Shooters are in body armor. They escape. How is this even possible? You know, it makes you think you're living in a twilight zone. If you're in the news business as I am, you at a certain point almost want to hide from it all. The news is so horrible. The country is so mismanaged. The president is so shady. ISIS is so out of control and so everywhere that it makes you want to turn away from it all and just lock yourself in a room with a loaded weapon to defend yourself. But you can't go there. You can't let the situation do that to you. So we have to cope with the situation the best we can. We have to hope that eventually we'll find out who did this and either they'll be hunted down and killed or brought to justice. It's certainly not going to bring the people back who were killed today. What sense did this make? No one knows. It's a social services center for developmentally disabled people. It wasn't a bank robbery. It was not a, a, a place that had any controversy surrounding it. So what is this about? No one knows. It's becoming crazier by the day. It's as though the country has been invaded by aliens who are indiscriminately messing things up. Of course, it hasn't. But there's no sense in the world anymore. It's all nonsense. It's a, it's a mishmash. 855-407-282 is the phone number. Already the demagogues are tweeting about gun seizures. Dianne Feinstein, Martin O'Malley, Hillary Clinton, all tweeting to take away the Second Amendment in one way or another. They didn't, take a, they didn't pause for one second to show us who they really are. The dangerous, evil, anti-American demagogues they always have been. WBAP, William, welcome to the Savage Nation. Go ahead, what's on your mind? Yes, good afternoon. Dr. Savage, I just wanted to say, uh, in regard to your conspiracy that you brought up at the end of the last hour, it's very interesting to go to a conspiracy because when you're not really educated on all the facts, and when are we ever educated on all the facts, you lean to a conspiracy. But a man once said to me, <clears throat> it's, there are three areas. It's what do you know, what do you think, and what can you prove? And to get to that proof is almost impossible, it seems. All right, so you're a rational man, obviously highly thoughtful. What does this story in your mind at this stage, you're certainly putting pieces together. Every thinking person is trying to figure out who could have done this. So your mind is rushing to the terrorism side, is it not? Uh, almost. It just seems too plausible to go after a disabled person because that's too easy uh it, it would almost make you think my goodness if they can do it there they can do it anywhere and that's whatever's going on it makes me believe they want you to think nobody's invincible but i think it's wait wait you're saying that let, let's run down the conspiracy lane together and we're just speculating right now Let's say it was terrorism, ISIS terrorism for a minute. We don't have any reason to know that for sure. But you say, why would they pick on a, on a, on a, on a center for handicapped people, basically? Well, <clears throat> my thinking is, unprovable, is that it's an easy, easy target. And as you watch TV tonight or listen to the radio, you, you see this or hear this, and you're thinking, Oh, my God, it, it could happen next door at the park, or it could hap it happen anywhere. And I think that's what these people want you uh -oh. to Uh-oh. Hold on now. We just got a piece of breaking news. Jim, is this confirmed before I read this on the air? Okay. I are you ready for this, everybody? 
first comes to us from Twitter News on the Minute. Breaking news. A man named Farouk Saeed is a possible suspect off the police scanner. A man named Farouk Saeed is a possible suspect. Again, this is only speculation, but it's being reported right now from Twitter at News on the Minute. A man named Farouk Saeed is a possible suspect in this cowardly shooting at this disability center. William, what does that tell you? Mm, not much yet. <laughs> not much yet. There are too many well, His name isn't John Smith, is it? Uh, no. His no. name isn't Mr. Christian, is it? Then we, we don't know. This stuff has come up before, Dr. Savage. You, you, you get led down the wrong, not you particularly, but... That's right. So let's, let's, not take, let's not take the bait. The mass shooting in San Bernardino, three shooters reported. They all got away. Well, who are the suspects? We don't know. But now we have a name that's just released by the Twitter news feed, Farouk Saeed. Sounds awfully Middle Eastern to me, doesn't it? Now, here's a story that I posted earlier on michaelsavage.com that is not related to this in any way because we don't know who did the shooting. Let's be very clear. Associated Press, not a right-wing conspiracy organization. Headline, ISIS as brutal toward gays as you would imagine. They're throwing them off roofs. Did you know that? You didn't hear about that in your local paper? ISIS as disgustingly homophobic as you'd imagine. Before a crowd of men on a street in the Syrian city of Palmyra, the masked Islamic State group judge read out the sentence against the two men convicted of homosexuality. They would be thrown to their death from the roof of the nearby Wa'il Hotel. He asked one of the men if he was satisfied with the sentence. Death, the judge told him, would help cleanse him of his homosexual sin. The man said, I'd prefer if you shoot me in the head. He said helplessly. The second man, 21-year-old Mohammed Salama, pleaded for a chance to repent promising never to have sex with a man again, according to a witness among the onlookers that sunny July morning who gave the Associated Press a rare first-hand account. The judge ought to take them and throw them off. Other, masks, other masked Muslim extremists tied the men's hands behind their backs and blindfolded them. They led them to the roof of the four-story hotel, according to the witness, who spoke in the Turkish city of Rahanli, on condition he be identified only by his first name, Omar, for fear of reprisals. Notorious for their gruesome methods of killing, the Islamic State group reserves one of its most brutal for suspected homosexuals. Well, I won't go on. Now, is that related at all to what happened in the handicap center? I hope not. So who are we thinking did this then in San Bernardino? Tell me. Tell me, if you're a rational law enforcement individual, and you see about the shoot, this shooting in San Bernardino. The first thought that comes to your mind is that it's terrorism. Is that not true? There's not a cop listening to this show, a detective, a Secret Service agent, a retired FBI agent, um, a current FBI agent, a current Secret Service agent, a current DHS agent. There's not a single agent in this country whose mind did not immediately say, uh-oh, is this an act of domestic terrorism? Not one would not think that. And if they didn't think that, they shouldn't take the job. They should be dismissed immediately. But, of course, we don't know what it is. But you see how you solve problems and you start with theories. Don't you start with theories? Or is that illegal now to have a theory in America? Has it now become illegal to have a theory? Is it racist to have a theory? Of course it's racist to have a theory about a, a criminal. You can't have a criminal. You have to wait for the criminal to be shown. Just clearly shown before you can say anything about him. And that's why the criminals are running wild in the streets right now. Because the cops' hands have been tied by Al Sharpton, by Eric Holder, Barack Obama, and the other minions of anti-police activists in this country. But let's put all of that aside. Three shooters armed with rifles, none in custody. That's astounding to me. They had a SWAT team there. Why couldn't they at least shoot the car up as it fled? What is it? They have rules of engagement? You can't shoot a tire out of an SUV? Does any of this make sense to any of you listening to this show? I mean, I'm telling you, I'm bewildered, and I have a pretty analytical mind, and I can be very rational and cool. I'm very good under stress. I'm actually better under stress than I am under no stress. I get in trouble when I don't have stress. I'm telling you that for a reason. I don't crack under fire, and I don't crack under stress. This is a very disturbing story. They walked into the conference room with three rifles and opened fire. 
Now, there's one little disturbance.